isolation is a problem that afflicts nearly every relationship with a person on the autism spectrum. So when uh, one partner is on the spectrum, it's not uncommon for some couples to slowly drift apart in a ways they don't even recognize at first. And so signs of isolation can include a feeling of being unable to please or meet the expectations of your partner, feeling that keeping the peace by avoiding conflict is better than the pain of dealing with reality, feeling that your partner isn't hearing you and doesn't want to understand, refusal to cope with what's really wrong, a sense that your partner is detached from you, and an attitude of who cares why try. So if you as a neurotypical are starting to observe these symptoms in your relationship, you have begun experiencing the problem of isolation. All relationships need a plan to reverse isolation and to bring about intimacy. You know what? Isolation is kind of like a virus that invades your relationship. Silently, slowly, and painlessly at first. But by the time you become aware of its harmful effects, it's almost too late. Your relationship can eventually be crippled by monotony and indifference, and it, it could even die from emotional malnutrition and neglect. So, what can you do? You can attend meetings, lectures, other activities that inform you about autism spectrum disorders. And that's going to be an opportunity to meet new people who share similar problems as you do. And the more you get out, the more you will see and be seen by others. And that's a real remedy to feelings of isolation in and of itself. So develop a network of friends and family to help support your relationship. That's key in overcoming loneliness. So in a nutshell, if you're unhappy in your relationship, with a person on the autism spectrum, please be proactive about resolving this state of mind, whatever it takes. Reach out, ask for help. Be your own self-advocate. Take care of you. Because if you don't, no one else will.